I'm going to be talking about uh, Mako hunting for high grade gold deposits in Cote d'Ivoire in West Africa. Oh, there we go. I I'm going to be making some forward looking statements today. Okay, seem to be having trouble here. There we go. Um, so just a, an overview. So we're in the Bermian greenstone belts, which are world-class uh, greenstone belts. There's over 70 plus 1 million ounce gold deposits there. So a strong reason to be there. Um, we have a really strong uh, cash balance. So we're fully funded to do all the exploration that we have uh, currently planned. We have our, our flagship Napier project, which is in, in Cote d'Ivoire, and we see that that has the potential for multi-million ounce gold deposits. Um, so strong news flow is expected to, to be coming out. We're currently uh, drilling. We've uh, had two rigs on the ground since uh, the beginning of January. We have an excellent, uh, uh, highly experienced West African board and management. And we're advancing towards a maiden jork resource on our Napier project. Um, so just a little bit on the on the corporate structure. So we have a, a market cap of 25 million. We have about 250 uh, million shares on issue. We're currently trading at about 10 and a half cents. Uh, we think we're highly undervalued compared to our peers. And I'll, I'll show you a little uh, diagram about that a bit later. Um, we have a cash balance of 10 million uh, Aussie, and that includes about 1 million that we're going to uh, acquire from our sale of our Burkina Faso assets. So we've recently sold those to Norgold. We're just waiting for the minister to sign off on that before we receive the cash. So a pretty strong, healthy cash balance, as I said. Um, board and management own about 4% uh, of the shares of, of Mako. And institutions hold about 14%. And we think that's a really st strong tick of approval to, for a junior explorer at this stage to have 14% uh, uh, institutional investors in on our register. Um, board and management there on the right, um, we all have extremely uh, strong West African experience. Uh, a lot of us are ex Orbis Gold. I don't know if you recall, um, we made three gold discoveries in Burkina Faso uh, and took two through to resource and one is a producing mine. So we were taken over in 2015 by a Canadian company. It's now owned by Endeavor. Um, but yeah, all to say that uh, we have strong green fields, uh, gold experience making discoveries. We've taken it through to resource and, and we have the capabilities on our board and management to take it through resource. Uh, I'm sorry, through to feasibility studies as well. Um, Cote d'Ivoire is a great destination. We love working there. Um, it's got 35% of the West African greenstone belts, and we think it's highly underexplored. It is a destination of choice. There's, you'll be hearing uh, lots of uh, Australian and, and Canadian companies, especially uh, recently having gone into Cote d'Ivoire. And there's been a, a couple mines that have just been put into production in the last couple of years as well. Um, so the, it's a really mining friendly jurisdiction. Uh, I think the government has seen the success in other West African countries uh, from you know, uh, having uh, Australian and Canadian explorers in there. And so they're very, very supportive of the mining industry. A very transparent mining code. It's uh, it's just a fairly new mining code, uh, 2015. Uh, good tax regime. It's actually lower than than Australia's for corporate tax, and it's got great infrastructure. This is a picture of Abidjan, the largest city. You know, you can see modern buildings, modern infrastructure. Um, this is a, a map of Cote d'Ivoire, so you can see the greenstone belts in green. Uh, the Mako permits are in the red. Uh, shapes that you see in the northern part of the country. It's really easy to work in the northern part. It's not quite as vegetated uh, as the, the southern, um, more rainforesty jungle part. Um, the, our flagship project is the Napier project that you see uh, on the map, and it's an earning joint venture with Perseus Mining. And we've earned 51% of the project, and we can earn up to 75% by taking it through to feasibility. 
And uh, we're currently working on, on the Napier project, and I'll go through that in a little bit more detail. Um, we've also recently acquired uh, those two other permits that you see just to the northwest of Napier, and those are 100% owned by, by MAKO. And uh, we've just recently started an exploration project, a program on, on those two permits. So I'll just start with our, our NAPIA project. It is our flagship project. We have uh, four prospects that we've identified through drilling. And uh, our main one is the Chaga prospect that you see in the middle there. It definitely has uh, the most amount of drilling. It's uh, along a 30 kilometer shear that goes all the way from, from the south to the north of the permit. So it's quite a large structure and it's, it's got an associated soil anomaly with it. So, um, you know, we do know that that, that structure, is, structure is mineralized for, for most of it. It's a 23 kilometer soil anomaly. So, you know, we had a real enviable problem when we acquired this ground, you know, where do you even start? It's, it's really a large, large soil anomaly. And um, so anyway, we, in early drilling in 2018, we focused on the, on the Chaga prospect where we thought we'd have the most success. Um, we did do some, some drilling in our, our uh, outlying uh, prospects, and we've just recently gone back to those and completed a 1,600 uh, meter uh, drill program on the Chaga East that lies a couple kilometers to the east on actually on a parallel structure to that 30 kilometer long shear. And we've also drilled uh, the Gogbala prospect to the south. So we've just done 53 holes there. And I'll talk about that in, in a minute. So I'll just uh, talk about the, the Chaga prospect, which is the one in the, in the center of that uh, circle. And this is a one kilometer long uh, uh, area uh, of the Chaga prospect. And what's really important here is um, you can see those blue ellipses. And we've only recently uh, recognized the continuity of the mineralization that's in that northeast southwest direction. So although it's related to that long 30 kilometer uh, north south shear, it's actually controlled, the mineralization is controlled by those black dashed lines that you see in this image, which are later structures. So the gold is coming up along those and, and it's also coming a lot up along the easier, uh, the earlier structure because it's just an easy structure as well to, for the fluids to move. So we can see that continuity in the northeast southwest direction that the pink outlines that you see there is that's actually the mineralization that's projected to surface. All those uh, pink and red and, and purple dots are, are the drill collars and uh, um, anyway we have uh, some fantastic results. Uh, that we've gotten in all of those uh, all of those loads. So they're stacked loads that that are, like I said, oriented north south uh, northeast southwest. So we have 41 meters at four and a half grams per ton uh, in load two, uh, 28 meters and almost five grams per ton. Load three, 13 meters at, at 20 grams per ton. So we seem to see this repetition of the high grade as you as you work your way north through those those stacked loads. So it's a whole series of them. So they're open in all directions. They're open at depth. They're open a long strike. And we're also exploring to the north to to we see evidence of those loads repeating to the the north and to the south as well. Um, so just in that uh, very southern ellipse, there's a cross section AB, the uh, light blue line that you can see, and I'll just show you a cross section through that. Okay, hopefully. There we go. Um, so this is a cross section. So. Um, there's multiple zones, multiple lenses that you can see within each of those uh, loads uh, that we showed in the blue ellipse. And really the, the drilling to date has been very shallow. We've only taken it down to about 100 meters uh, vertical depth on average. Uh, we do have in load two, we've gone down as far as 185 meters vertical depth. So the mineralization does continue at depth. And uh, this one is an example of the high grade uh, zone right from surface, and uh, we you can see the mineralization extends down to about 100 meters vertical depth, and then that blue line on the drill hole on the very left, that's a diamond tail that we've recently drilled, so we're still waiting for, for the assay results on that. So, you know, that'll almost double the, the uh, um, 
depth of mineralization that we've identified to date in that area. So there's a lot of potential to, to go down at depth as well as along strike. And this is um, a long section, so that's perpendicular to the cross section that I just showed you. And in this, you can see from, from uh, right to left are the loads. Uh, on the right is load one, the southernmost load that uh, you saw in the plan view. And you can see load two is really the only uh, area that we've drilled down to that 185 meter vertical depth. So, the, you know, there's lots of potential. Um, you know, this is open pitable material, you know, uh, down to 150, 200 meters uh, vertical depth is, is definitely, you know, uh, doable, uh, mineable depths for open pit. Um, so we can, we can just about double the, you know, what we have already in load one and, and load three. And then you can see just a hint of, of load four there on the very left. And really, you know, we've just scratched the surface of, of that. And we're continuing to, to drill, as I said, on either side. And we have done some preliminary MET test work. Um, it's uh, come back uh, with excellent results, over 94% recovery in both the oxide and the fresh rock. And the slide of the core, that, that kind of explains why we have good uh, metallurgical uh, results. Those red circles uh, show the visible gold. And you can see that it's, it's associated with the pyrite, but it's not actually tied up in the pyrite. So that's why the, the recovery is so high. And now we're just moving uh, four kilometers to the south to our Gogbala prospect. And this was just recently drilled. So th this is uh, uh, an IP survey that we have uh, just did before drilling. And that really helps us identify those, those later cross-cutting structures um, that are hosting the, the mineralization. And so we've had some, some pretty fantastic numbers out of this, even though the, the drilling has been really wide spaced. You know, you can see 12 meters at, at six, uh, sorry, five grams per ton. Um, you know, we just recently announced six meters at almost five grams per ton. So really encouraging results, really wide space drilling. You know, that's a, a five kilometer long zone that you can see there. So we've really, again, just started um, to, to understand, to, to look at this prospect. And there's lots of, of follow-up drilling that we uh, see already that we can do. Uh, those white dots that you see in the north, we're still waiting on the results for those holes. And when we have the results from, from all of the holes, we'll prioritize where we want to do our follow-up drilling. And then I'll just talk about uh, our new permits uh, that we just recently acquired uh, in 2020. So those are all our permits are shown in the red uh, outlines. Uh, you can see the Napier permit in the south center. Um, and then our permits are in, new permits are in the belt to the west. And they're easily uh, explored through our, our central MAKO field office that, that you can see that sits in the middle of, of the permits. Um, one of the reasons that uh, we acquired these permits was that granite greenstone contact, so where the, the green and the pink join up. So we have 17 kilometers of that uh, uh, contact zone. And, you know, we think that's an excellent place to, to explore for gold. These, these large structures at the contacts are, are good plumbing networks for gold. Um, we've, oh, sorry. Um, we've recently just started a soil sampling survey on, on the permits. Uh, they're about halfway through the northern uh, permit. It's called Wangalodugu. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, so uh, what we like uh, about the permits, as I said, was that structure going through. This is a, a regional uh, magnetic map that covers the whole country. But those gray dashed lines are, are structures that we've identified in the magnetics. and. Um, and so therefore, you know, doing the, the soil sampling over those uh, areas hopefully will, uh, um, you know, light up some, some areas to follow up for, for drill testing afterwards. And we've also recently signed a, a, a contract with uh, a 
airborne geophysical company, so uh, to do high resolution airborne magnetics and, and radiometrics, and that will help us with our, our targeting in this area. Oops. One more minute. Um, one of the things that uh, MAKO, I think, does really well is engage with the, the communities. We have a local hire policy. Um, you know, all of our, our staff uh, on the ground are, are national, so all our technical team. And that's allowed us to, to work really easily through COVID. We actually haven't slowed down at all. We have good COVID protocols in place, obviously. Um, but, um, you know, an excellent team. And we also hire locals from, from the community as our laborers uh, on the drill rig or, or for our sampling. And we've also recently uh, drilled a water well for the community in partnership with, with GeoDrill, our contractor. Um, one of the things um, that I really want to point out is we think we're highly undervalued compared to our peers. We're over on the very right there. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, in comparison with other explorers um, like Oclo, Chesser, um, who are at similar stages uh, as we are, um, you know, they're, they're two, three, four times our, our market cap. Um, so, uh, yeah, I th just think that we're, we're highly undervalued for for what we have uh, and shown to date on the ground that we, we've uh, seen in drilling. And then just to sum up, um, again, you know, we're in a world-class area. The Brimian Greenstone Belt hosts over 70 uh, plus 1 million ounce gold deposits. We've had ex outstanding drill results to date and, and we're still drilling and, and following up and still getting uh, good drill results. Uh, we think there's multi-million ounce potential uh, on certainly on the Napier uh, process, um, permit. We have a proven West African exploration team. You know, we've we've made five gold discoveries to date. Uh, we've taken uh, projects through to to resource and, and feasibility studies. And um, yeah, we're doing aggressive exploration. As I said, we currently have our, our drilling now on our Napier. We're soil sampling. We're going to do an airborne uh, survey. So lots of news flow coming out in the near future. We have a really strong cash balance of uh, 10 million in the bank. So fully funded to do all the exploration that we have planned. And we're advancing towards a maiden jork resource on our Napier project that we hope to, to announce later this year. Thank you.